scoring test is fooled by algorithmic systems, or at least said something like that, well, how will we know when we do have an intelligent computer? Talk to it longer? No, we're not. We, uh, we won't know, ever know whether we have an intelligent computer any more than we will know whether we have an airplane that flies. It's a meaningless question, exactly as Turing said. How, how, suppose I ask you this question. We're, we're, let's say we're back in 1980, you know, or whenever the first right thing was. And suppose somebody came along and said, suppose I make something that goes up in the air, how are we going to know if it flies? That's just a dumb question, you know. It'll fly, it, 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 there's no question as to whether it's going to fly. If you want to call that stuff flying, okay, it's flying. In English, you happen to decide to call it flying. In some other language, you call it something else. But there is no empirical question as to whether an airplane flies. And there is no empirical question as to whether an algorithm thinks for exactly the same reason. Flying is something birds do, at least if you talk in English. And thinking is something humans do. It's sort of embedded in a big matrix of human interests and so on. And just as airplanes don't do whatever it is birds are doing, uh, uh, even if they could fool somebody into thinking that it's a bird, that would be irrelevant. Uh, similarly, uh, algorithms or brains are not doing things that humans do. For example, is there a question as to whether brains think? Well, brains don't think. Of course they don't think. My brain doesn't see triangles. So how about my brain? Let's forget computers. My brain doesn't see triangles for trivial reasons. Seeing triangles is a human action. We attribute that characterization to humans in a framework of human interests and concerns and motives, the notion, this notion is of absolutely no use for science. I mean, we don't study in the sciences things like thinking any more than we study things like desk in the sciences. I mean, these are concepts of common sense. They don't belong in the sciences. They don't enter into rational explanatory theory. So you, in the sciences, you're constantly trying to get rid of all these things and move to concepts that have some utility, not things like desk or thinking or something like that or digestion. You know, you look at what's actually happening, try to understand it in terms of whatever concepts and principles are relevant. But to ask the question whether uh, a, a program thinks or whether a brain sees a triangle is as dumb as asking whether a, an airplane flies. It is not going to have an answer for trivial reasons. There is no answer to the question whether airplanes fly, and there's no point setting up an analog of the Turing test uh, that says, well, can we construct something that's going to fool a human under some circumstances? That won't tell us whether it's flying or not. But if you say you think, I presume, and what if we make a machine with the attributes like the human brain, very complicated... Well, the human brain has attributes like the human okay. brain, and the human brain doesn't think. Well, people, humans think. Humans do, but human brains don't, any more than your brain sees a triangle. Your brain doesn't see a triangle for quite uninteresting reasons. Uh, and uh, uh, correspondingly, uh, something with the characteristics of your brain doesn't see a triangle. People are the ones who do things like that, just as Turing said. Now, you can ask pointless questions, like what will be the empirical conditions under which an airplane flies. If you ask a pointless question, you're never going to get an answer, of course. Uh, now, it's interesting that in the, you know, dealing with sort of phenomenal world, like airplanes and flying, nobody asks those silly questions. I mean, if somebody tried to start a new science, dealing with the question whether airplanes fly, they'd be laughed out of, uh, you know, uh, nobody would even bother laughing. Well, there really were standards for the human flight contest. There were some standards. Yes, there, but, but you don't ask whether, whether, see, you don't even ask whether humans can fly. First, somebody came along and said, how do we know that humans can't fly? Uh, take a look at the last Olympics. Some guy went 30 feet. Why isn't that flying? You know, it's only one order of magnitude less than chicken. <laughs> it's just a dumb question. You know? It has no answers. You know, it's a matter of decision whether we want to call that flying or not.